Okay, hi guys. Welcome back to uh, the second video of my equestrian art. Uh, this is a, a piece that I'm actually showing right now. I, I showed you the background the other day and there's a title that says what is blocking. I, it's some, maybe something I kind of invented myself. Uh, the blocking was done, uh, I make a large sketch. I'll actually sketch the full size piece to make sure I'm accurate on what I do. And then I actually cut out pieces of that sketch and put it right over top of the canvas and lay it down that way. So that's why you've seen the blocking here. And I, I, I keep on meaning to show it to you. And uh, when I get involved with that, I don't know why, but I, I, I'm so involved with getting the blocking done right that uh, I forget to turn the camera on once in a while. And that's what happened with this one again. This is the second time I've done it. Anyway, so you're going to see these, these uh, uh, sketches put in here very accurately at this point. And I've blocked in certain colors. This one I've only gone to uh, like a, a grayish white and a, and a black or lamp black. I, I do a combination of lamp black and Payne's gray in here. So it's just the black is not too, too punchy. But anyway, uh, as I go along with this piece, um, I'm doing it a little different again. Uh, I'm not doing it in a uh, layer. The background is layered, but I'm not doing the uh, horse and then layering the uh, harness on top. And that's because I really want this to be uh, a, a, an extremely accurate piece. So there's no nothing freehand happening afterwards. Once I did this sketch that I thought was, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as perfect as I can get it, uh, then I would, uh, you know, cut out the blocking parts, put it up on the canvas, and I don't change it. Um, like, you probably don't see everything that's happening here, but when you look really close, even at the horse's eye, uh, it was, uh, there's some pretty faint stuff that's in there, but uh, it, it's meant to be extremely accurate. So, again, that's why the harness is already put in. The harness, if it was done wrong, it'll make the horse look like he's, it's, it's uh, body is out of whack. It wouldn't, there's some plumpness to things that are happening and, you know, and um, sometimes when the harness lays down, it kind of moves sideways and everything else. So here we go. Uh, I'm jumping back and forth and you're going to see this all the way through here, um, especially when I get back into the white part of it. Uh, I, I you'll find me popping back and forth and, and I'll go from area to area. You just saw that happen a little tiny bit there. And uh, that when I'm doing that, I'm actually looking for my, my, my color values. And uh, this piece is actually, what you're gonna see at the end of it, it's actually look, gonna look pretty realistic. Although the problem with that is, is it's not near as realistic as I want it to be. So again, I mean, when I'm dealing with this piece, I am dealing with a family that is accustomed to really world-class art and uh, of the highest order. And um, this way of doing things, uh, as a, Colleen always says, I'm a perfectionist. I think in these areas, I really do believe that I try to get as close to perfect as possible. Um, and uh, that's why these uh, blocking parts are very, very important, but also the technique of laying down the, the paint very slowly. This uh, is number two video. I don't know how many videos it's going to take me to actually get this horse to the point where I really believe it's what I want it to be as a finished product. But it, it's kind of fun. When you look at it like this right now, I, I, the painting I'm doing right now, the amount of painting I did is about just a little, a little bit over two hours, two and a half hours when we're done this video. And uh, it is looking more and more realistic as I go. I just, again, popping uh, uh, colors in here and there. And I'm watching it. Like the, the canvas tells me things, uh, you know, uh, this is a hard one for, for artists. Uh, if you don't want to sit back and you'll see me once in a while, you'll see me move back and, and when I'm out of view for a second, I'm really not out of view for a second. I'm probably out of view for maybe one or two minutes. And those minutes are looking at the piece, making sure that those uh, highlights and everything else are, are 
making the shapes form properly. Like the chest of the horse right now uh, is very, very simple. You're going to see that as they go along. There's actually wrinkles in the skin and everything else. Now that's kind of exciting. You'll see it happening probably in the next video. And then what I've done on top of this is I, I actually did the entire piece and lined it up perfectly. And the sketch I did was exactly the same size as the canvas, which is something I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that before other than maybe Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali did some... Well, I, I shouldn't say that because Da Vinci did the same thing. They would actually, uh, in Dali's case, he would use like a, a an onion skin uh, paper. He would do his sketch probably with a a, a pastel or some or some sort of a, a charcoal, and then he would actually use pinholes. And when he put his down, he would rub uh, the chalk over top, like a chalk over top the pinholes that he's actually placed where say where the harness is on the horse, he would do a whole bunch of pinholes. And it, it was almost like joining the dots. I, I don't really go for that that uh, part of it. And I think right now, because paper, to me, I can buy large pieces of paper, sketch paper, so it allows me to really go that next step. The problem with that, that is, you know, you spend the, probably, I probably spent a day and a half or two days on this sketch. Um, I don't have it because I got it all cut up into pieces right now. But, uh, you know, that is the problem with that is you seem to sp spend a day and a half and then all of a sudden you're cutting all of these little bits of the sketch away and uh, if somebody saw me doing that, knowing the values of my sketches, they would probably uh, be a little upset because I'm actually cutting one apart and throwing it away in the garbage afterwards. But anyway, uh, you notice right now we're going back and forth. And as I work in this area, I'm going to, you notice the brush just got a little bit bigger there. So I'm, I'm going to cover a bit more area. But if that one piece I was just working on seems a little too bold right at the moment. So as I go along in layers, and, and these layers are happening. Uh, if you were looking up close at that, if you look at the top of the neck, you, neck, you can actually see the brown showing through. In time, I'm going to probably put three or four layers, and that will actually al allow a little bit of the brown to show through in spots, and that brown will actually take, uh, make sure that the subject actually fits with the background. Uh, that's a real, uh, a very, very um, sensitive trick. I don't know what you call it, sensitive. Uh, a very subtle trick that there's ambient light being cast by the background. So if I actually allow a few areas of this, uh, this painting to show that background through, it's really not going to make that feel like that to you. You're actually going to feel it, it's reflected light off of the background into the, uh, the white of the horse. So anyway, uh, that wide brush again, we're going back and forth and you'll see me popping back and forth. I, I, I painted a little bit of gray there and then I went over and I did a little bit of gray there and a bit of gray there. So uh, as I finish up this one leg, I, we'll get ready to uh, close this video out and uh, we'll see on the next one. You'll see a lot more details happening and, I'll, and also I'll start to work on the rider. We'll see you later guys. Take care. Skippy.